Welcome to the live stream of the Spiritual Leadership Conference 2015. And we're very excited about what's about to begin right here on the campus of Lancaster Baptist Church and West Coast Baptist College. And of course, our theme this year is taken from the promise of Jesus Christ himself who said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And uh, with me tonight is Pastor Mike Norris from Murfreesboro, North Carolina, and Pastor Tim Rabin from Raleigh, North Carolina. Did I say North Carolina? Yeah, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, Tennessee okay. and, <laughs> and Brother Rabin from Raleigh, North Carolina. And uh, so we've got the Southern connection here tonight, but I think both of you men would agree with me that uh, there, there's a lot of concern on our hearts as pastors and as Christians for the direction of our country. And sometimes there's even concern about uh, what's going to happen next for the church with respect to uh, the decline in church attendance that some denominations are reporting and the apathy that seems to be existing amongst many Christians today. And, and yet, Jesus said, I will build my church. Mm -hmm. And and we want to emphasize the, the powerful, positive promise that Jesus has given. And I don't know about you guys, but when I think about first century Christianity, they weren't ministering in real rosy times right, right. Uh, when the church flourished and saw uh, many, many thousands of people throughout the known world come to Christ. And so my prayer is that at this conference, above all else, there would be hundreds of pastors and Christian leaders that would leave this place with a, a confidence in the Lord and an optimism in what still can be done to the glory of God. And I want to thank both of you for coming. And of course, uh, there are folks in many countries and many states who couldn't be here personally. And throughout this week, we want you to share in the spirit of hope and in the biblical promises of God's word uh, for his local church. Brother Norris, if you would, just take a minute and uh, maybe share with us uh, what you sense in your heart uh, is, is the greatest potential for a meeting like this uh, with respect to what God wants to do in the hearts of preachers this week. Well, Brother Chapel, it was exciting last night just to see what God's been doing in this place and to come alongside your church last night during a time of growth and building uh, is contagious, really. Mm -hmm. And I think it's good for independent Baptists to come together like that and, and be a part of that, not just your church, but other ministries. I know Brother Rabin's ministry is flourishing there in Raleigh. And to be around other men and sharpen each other, I think is a tremendous asset for times like these. We understand where we're at as a nation. I get a pastor in the South. And the South has always been a hotbed for church and soul winning and so forth. But even in the South, things are growing cold. Right. And we need to come to a place regular, yearly if we can, or more often, we can recharge our batteries mm -hmm. and get fired up, you know, and maybe bring revival back to our churches, which is so desperately needed. Amen. Mm -hmm. I think of the psalmist who said, Wilt thou not revive us again, that yeah. thy people may rejoice in thee? And uh, it seems like a lot of time there's a simulated, worked up kind of a temporary joy or happiness, right. but it's not sustained in the spirit of soul winning and bringing our sheaves with us and rejoicing in, in that type of victory. And Brother Rabin, uh, from the standpoint of soul winning and fruit bearing, uh, how do you view a conference like this and, and the potential uh, for your church, your staff, and for the other churches that are here this week? Well, of course, the great uh, opportunity is here is to be encouraged by what's happening here at Lancaster, Amen. but also to be challenged to do the same. You know, God's not limited to one locale. Amen. He's not limited to one place. He's not limited to our nation. Right. The wonderful thing is the work of God's going on around the world. Yeah. And uh, as we obey the Great Commission, mm -hmm. then God promises to bless our obedience. Right. You know, last night we had uh, many folks that uh, came by our house after church and uh, uh, we had some good food and some good fellowship. Some good Mexican food, I might add, and, uh, but that was, that was wonderful. But amongst all of the guests, there's a pastor sitting there uh, from Syria. Right. And, and I, I chose to sit at the table with him, and he began to tell me about the atrocities of ISIS just really miles from his church. And he said, Brother Chapel, we have people coming to us, uh, hundreds of people a day coming to their church that are refugees and he said the the muslim factions are so many it's hard to understand who's for who and they're all against one another but he said the one common thing that they have is when their husbands killed at war he said these women and their children need food 
Mm -hmm. and they need help. And he said, we are seeing right now more people saved than we've ever seen right. in the history of our church because of all of the people that are coming to them. And, and I think uh, as Americans, we've become spoiled and materialized, and, and yet there are places in the world, sometimes unlikely places, where the church is still being built at a, right. at a more aggressive rate. Right. And yet I know you all, uh, like me, long to see a resurgence of soul winning, Bible preaching, yes, uh, that's right. taking a strong stand but with the right spirit right. Uh, type of ministry. And when it comes to that issue, Brother Norris, of, of trying to model for maybe some of the 20 and 30 year old uh, young, young men out there that are independent Baptists and they're, they're good men and they're sound men, mm -hmm. share a little bit about your heart just in modeling uh, biblical ministry that has a good spirit and the importance of that. You know, Brother Chapel, I think as independent Baptists, we've been in this thing for a long time, grew up in it, both of us. And there's probably always been just a little bit of confusion and feuding from time to time. But as I've grown older in the movement, I have found that the best position is that all of these folks, most of these folks are trying to get people to Jesus Christ. Right. You may not agree with them. They may be to the, to the left of you somewhat. They may be to the far right of you. But nevertheless, they're trying to get people to Jesus. And I think we need to, as I mentioned last night in my message on one heart from mm -hmm. 2 Chronicles 30, how it was the hand of God to give those people one heart to get back to that sacrifice, the yeah. Passover, which is really getting back to the Lord Jesus Christ. And, Amen. And yeah. in our culture today, I think that's key. And if some of the younger pastors out there would remember that we don't put our eyes on men, we thank God for men, yeah. men will fail us and mm -hmm. men will mentor us and encourage us. Mm -hmm but we must keep our eyes on Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, and I, and I, I wanna to add to that, that that Christ must not merely be prominent, he must be preeminent. Preeminent, that's right. Sir. And, and that we all have preferences. Uh, all three of us, if we sat here and made a list, would do certain things slightly differently. But the fact of the matter is, when we elevate preferences to the level of doctrine, and only for the point of making division, we're hurting the gospel focus that you mentioned a moment exactly. ago. Exactly. And, uh, and, and I really believe that that, that spirit of, of standing strong, not, not compromising on truth and not compromising in areas of biblical separation, but just not nitpicking for the sake of nitpicking. And that, that's one of the reasons, frankly, that we call this the Spiritual Leadership Conference, right. mm -hmm. that it would be of the Spirit. And when the Spirit is present, there's love, joy, and there's peace. Yes. Mm -hmm. and Brother Raven, I know you have sons coming up in the ministry. Uh, what does it mean to you that they would see modeling that is biblically attractive to them? Of course, uh, my heart, your heart, you have sons. Brother Mike has a son, and uh, all of our sons are in ministry. And the heart is for them to love the Lord, Amen. number one, Amen. first and foremost. And number two, to love his word. Mm -hmm. And number three, to love his work. Amen. And if they do that, you know, the little bit of difference or change or whatever you want to call it. You know, I used to, of course, I reckon all of us did that grew up in uh, fundamentalism. We, we equated change with compromise. Right. But, but that's not necessarily so. Right. I mean, there are a lot of things that you and I can do today to get the gospel to the world that couldn't do when I was my son's age. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And as uh, and long as we don't compromise the message, Amen. we give the word of God, mm -hmm. the truth of salvation, hope only in Jesus Christ. Right. And as we do that, then they see in us a desire to please the Lord, Amen. you know? And if my boys know that I want to please God and that dad's trying to do what he believes God wants him to do, then, you know, we move forward and, and, and the next generation can carry it on. We, I mean, we're not the end of this thing no. unless Jesus comes. That's exactly and, right. And uh, we, we want it to carry on. You know, we met today with about 75 church planters and uh, we had a great lunch, a uh, fantastic lesson. And by the way, all the lessons from the conference are going to be available for free downloads just the very next day. So if you hear about something or hear something mentioned this week, just know that you can get it all right at LancasterBaptist.org. And you can also uh, order the, uh, and, and actually you can receive the outlines uh, downloadable right there on the sites as well. But the church planners just encouraged my heart. And they asked questions. We had a question and answer time, and a couple of uh, guys that have planted a lot of churches were with me, Brother Mark Ermler and uh, Brother Dave Tice. And they asked questions, for example, like, uh, would you have a Sunday night service right away? You know, and I was able to say what I felt about the importance of Sunday night, but also able to say, if you don't have them right away, or if you wind up having your midweek on a, 
on an off night or your Sunday night for a while is at someone's house. or In other words, the methodology may be slightly different. Uh, we had men there that are starting churches in Brooklyn, New York, and Vancouver, Canada, and downtown mm-hmm. L.A. Amen. And I think they need to understand that if, if they're holding true to the doctrine and they live a pure life and uh, they're winning souls, we're mm-hmm. for them. And, right. uh, and, and if they're solid Baptist young men, that we want them uh, to have our heart uh, and to have our prayers. And you know, this week, as, as we have really just three days, um, it's my prayer that God will specifically uh, cause men to step up to this issue of the fact that Jesus wants to build through us. Yes. And that we would say, Lord, uh, do a greater work in the days ahead. And we're emphasizing three things. First, we're emphasizing the matter of soul winning. And tonight, uh, we're going to emphasize just getting back to soul winning. Too many ministries today are in a maintenance mode, not in a right. building mode. Yeah. And so we, we've got to come back to the Great Commission. Um, the fact is that, uh, that in many, many quarters, uh, salvations and baptism are slipping. And, and I don't think it's because people don't want to get saved. It's often a lack of just sowing the seed. Right. Secondly, we're going to emphasize tomorrow night discipleship. And we want to just really encourage this week every church to have fruit that remains. Uh, a lot of the conferences that, that we've been to, and they're exciting and, and uh, emphasizing soul winning, uh, but there's not been the strategy and there's not been the emphasis right. on, on fruit that remains. And then the third night, we're going to emphasize missions, and we're going to talk about church planting. We're going to talk about what God's mm-hmm. doing overseas, and we're just going to remember that uh, Jesus said that we're to look under the fields that are white already to harvest. That's right. And, and I don't know how you go wrong with those three principles. So right. uh, I'm excited about what God has in store. And I, I want to say personally, Brother Rabin, uh, we thank God for you, for your ministry, uh, for your family. Uh, and uh, we thank God for you, Brother Norris, for Amen. your ministry Pleasure. and your family. And just uh, when I think about some of the great works, I think about yours. Uh, we pray for you. And, and I pray that God will continue to have his hand upon your ministries. And and I pray that this week, um, again, that there be that spirit of striving together for the faith of the gospel and, uh, and that our common uh, heart is going to be around Christ and around mm-hmm. the Word mm-hmm. and uh, not necessarily personalities, not necessarily just, uh, just issues. And though there's some good issues we want to hold on to, but primarily this matter of getting Christ to the world. Absolutely. And I want to thank you for being here. Good. And uh, I see Dr. Gibbs just stepped in. Yes, and he did. and uh, let's see if we can have Brother Gibbs step over here with us for just a minute. Brother Gibbs, welcome. Thank you, and, Pastor. Uh, I think hey, most of those God that are on uh, live stream here are well aware of the Christian Law Association. And uh, we have just a, a wonderful, wonderful lineup of speakers this year. And of course, Dr. Gibbs will, will preach for us on Wednesday morning. And Brother Gibbs, uh, Probably more than anybody I know, uh, you're seeing the, the effects of a, a culture that's speaking into the church rather than the church speaking into the culture. And, uh, and because of that, we're, we're losing a lot, of, a lot of battles in one sense. And this week, as we're trying to encourage pastors to build, um, just share your heart from, from your observation, from your vantage point, what would be some things that you would pray God would do this week? The culture in which we're living right now is making a pitched out effort to see if they can't get God's people to conform to what this culture values. Mm -hmm. And the value has nothing to do with the Bible, it has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. It has to do with valuing the good life and what this culture seeks in life. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden, suddenly the church is standing as never before. The only hope America has is the local church. That's right. That's the only hope. Because ultimately, people have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because what the culture cannot answer is what happens the day you die? What happens the day that this life is over and now you're in eternity? And suddenly, they have to come to the point where the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die. That's right. And then the judgment. And so what we're out here with is what the Bible calls the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And indeed, the greatest asset America has, it's the greatest asset America has ever had, is the local church and the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's right. I am more excited for what I see happening in the fervor of the local church than I've ever been in my lifetime. And while our culture seems to be dissolving around us, and you see heartbreaking things, we have the answer, mm-hmm. the answer to every qualm, 
every uncertainty is Jesus Christ. And so this conference where we come back to the fact that Jesus said, the Son of God said, I will build my church. Amen. Amen. It's not up to us to build That's it. That's right. He has promised to build Amen. it. And what he promises, he never fails. That's right. So yeah. the church is the answer for America. Amen. You know, uh, Dr. Bobby Robertson, who's a dear friend of all of us, once said, um, I don't have to keep the light shining. I just have to keep the bulb clean. There you go. And uh, Jesus is the light. He's the builder. We're just the instruments. Yes. And, and yet we want to be sharpened this week. Yep. And I think about yesterday, uh, Dr. Willette brought the morning message on continue. continue. Yes. And he talked about the cultural shift. And he said, so what do we do? And, and the Bible was very clear that we're to continue in the things that we've learned and been assured of. And certainly that's an emphasis. Then last night, uh, Dr. Norris preached on one heart and the people of Israel being challenged in the days of Hezekiah to be of one heart and how we need that in our churches and amongst the preachers today. Good. Boy, when you, when you put those two together, continue with one heart. Yeah. And, and there are churches that have capitulated. There are churches that are uh, doing all kinds of crazy things right. and dropping services and dropping convictions. But Brother Gibbs, I really think you touched on something. There's a bunch of churches and a bunch of Christians right. in the country saying, Enough is enough. That's it. And uh, if we don't start standing for the Lord right now, who knows what our grandchildren will be living in. Yep. So I believe this is the greatest hour to be a Christian that's ever existed in the history of America. Amen. Because we get to shine the light in darkness that's never existed before. I and I, I really believe this week, as we emphasize the fact that there's a backdrop of culture change, all right, we all see that, we feel that. But we've got to be uh, putting forth a message of hope in what Christ is doing Amen. and what Christ can do. So, yeah, I agree. Uh, because, uh, boy, when you talk to different Christians, uh, the first thing is always the, the lamenting of what's happening. But the Bible's sure full of a lot of promises oh, amen. about yes. what God can do. Right. And so I appreciate so much you men being here. And uh, I want to just say to all of those that are joining us, and I know there are folks right now from many countries, many states, that we're honored to have you with us. I received some emails even today from some pastors who said, my calendar wouldn't let me work to be there, my, my finances were tight. Uh, and many said, now we'll be tuning in right uh, as the services get started. And we want you to know we're praying for you. Um, we believe that God has a, a, a real blessing that he wants to give not only to those here in the auditorium and in the overflow auditoriums, but also those that are watching. And all I would ask you as you watch is that you might just pray. Watch yeah. and pray. And uh, ask the Lord to, to do a work uh, in not only your heart, but in all of our hearts uh, as we have this conference. And, and uh, when I think of the potential of, of really several hundred churches that have already registered this afternoon, mm -hmm. what would happen if every one of those churches would, would have leadership that said, I'm gonna ask the Lord to help us to build in a greater way in the days ahead. The great potential with that. And uh, so we're excited about what God's going to do. Amen. And uh, I'm gonna ask uh, Pastor Norris, if you would just lead us in a word of prayer Let's and ask the Lord to bless this conference tonight. Father, we're so grateful and thankful for what we've already sensed here in the past two services. We look forward to tonight. And I pray that you'll just empower the speaker. And I pray you'll be in our midst. And we ask you, Lord, on behalf of our nation and the world, that you send revival, and tonight it could start here. And I pray you'll give us a great night. Lord, bless these watching by live stream, and I pray that you give us a victorious evening. Bless those traveling in tonight for this great meeting. Give us a great crowd, great spirit, and touch hearts and lives, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Well, stay with us for these next few moments. We're going to be starting the service in less than five minutes, and we're excited to see what God has in store.